Closed captioning for Maine Life is brought to you by... Hi everyone, welcome to Megalian Rugs at 175 Anderson Street in Portland, Maine. A lot of our designers start with the rug. It's the foundation of the room. We do work with people on all budgets from lower end all the way to the higher end. Whether you're looking for one or two rugs or a whole house full. Yeah, I'm the third generation in the rug business. I grew up around it. It's, it's in my blood and I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Of an echo is the semblance of a sound And I've pressed and I've waited With my ear upon the ground Oh lover, I'll see you there Waiting in the willows with your autumn hair Oh lover, I'll see you there After many months Hi, I'm Andrew Silsby, President and CEO of Kennebec Savings Bank and proud presenting sponsor of Maine Life, a show that's dedicated to telling positive stories about life right here in Maine. Like many of you, I was excited to turn the calendar to 2021 and all the optimism it brings. If this is your year to change your banking relationship, don't hesitate to reach out to Kennebec Savings Bank. Our staff stand ready to assist you with all your financial needs. Click or call us today. We hope you enjoy this episode of Main Life. Thanks for watching. All right, Aaron, welcome to our flagship store on Commercial Street. Oh my gosh. Wow. Looks a little different. You know, it's great to see you all, and it's been months, but I know that. Yeah, this hasn't changed. The whole yeah. time. This is not You've been changed. wanting this. Notice the char <laughs> on the bottom there. We got the char from the oven. We really pride ourselves on how much nourishment and dignity we have been able to serve alongside our meals. And that is all thanks to Mainers. Hi everybody and thanks for watching this episode of Main Life. Just about a year ago and Vanessa and I sat down to film our summer series and finally got the go ahead to safely get out around the state. There were so many unknowns. And while many individuals, families, and businesses were struggling during this challenging time, as usual, Mainers showed up for one another. So on this episode, we are celebrating success. The success of one Maine company that continues to grow, and one of our partners who helped raise over a million dollars to support local producers, restaurants, and those in need. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you all out on the road this summer. Our first stop is downtown Portland. Saving over 700 tons of sailboat sails from the landfill is a lot of work, but believe it or not, one local company has proven it is up to the task. Seabags handcrafts recycled sailcloth totes and accessories that are as authentic and rugged as the state of Maine and its people. And it's no wonder that Seabags has quickly become an iconic Maine brand and one of my personal favorites. So I discovered sea bags on this wharf probably 17 years ago and it was a bit of a hobby business being made one bag at a time but what struck me was the beautiful gorgeous material given a nice second use keeping these products from the landfill. So when we started the business you know we agreed on some cornerstones so the first would be to be green in product and practice. The others is to be good stewards to our community. I really wanted to be grounded in Portland. It was important to me to give back where we could. And the last is to create jobs. There were three of us when we started and there are 170 of us today. You know, we need an opportunity for young people to stay in Maine and have career paths. We need to bring cut and sew back to this state. Our team are such skilled, craftsmen and craftswomen. The quality is second to none of anything I've seen and that's what makes me the most proud. The nature of our product keeps us true to our roots. Our sourcing philosophy for our raw materials is Maine first, New England second, the U.S. and it stops there. So by keeping our eye on the cornerstones of which we started and never forgetting that, it keeps us authentic and true to who we are and I think that's why you know people keep coming back to us. When I first met Beth and learned about Seabags, I thought, what a great story, what a great brand. Here it is, made in Maine, handcrafted, sustainable, nautical. There was so much to like about it. And with my experience and background working with brands, 
working on websites, retail, that maybe I could help grow the business. So that was almost eight years ago now. Customers love the product and being able to see and touch the product and we always say every bag is unique. Even though they may have the same design, because of the nature of the sale and the material, no two bags are exactly alike. So the ability to interact with our brand, with our product in person is really key. We've gone from a little space in the front of this store and one store in Freeport to now 39 stores as of tomorrow. That was one of the primary reasons that attracted me was the opportunity to add jobs, grow good paying jobs and grow the business. So, um, so far so good. Just so happened one morning in October as I was walking to work, I saw that space was going out of business and we took a look and said, wow, this is big, could we do it? So we opened a tent sale, indoor tent sale. We said, we'll do it for six weeks and see how it goes. Sales were way beyond our wildest expectations. And then for the last probably three or four weeks now, we've been transforming it into a flagship store and taking all the elements from here and just doing it on a much, much larger, grander scale. Hi everyone, my name is Paul Gorey. I'm the Vice President of Retail Stores with Seabags. You're standing in what will soon be our flagship store we're so excited about here in Portland, Maine. Well, our new flagship store will be our 39th store and we're in 14 states throughout the United States, so the growth has been quite exciting. Um, this location on Commercial Street in Portland is ideal. It's centrally located and it's very exciting to be just a stone's throw from our manufacturing operation on Custom House Wharf. Uh, this location specifically, large front windows, very open, very inviting. What we've tried to do in the flagship is present what I call the anatomy of a recycled sale. And that shows every piece that's made from the sale. There's outlines depicting each of the individual pieces that that sale turns into, whether it's a tote, whether it's a wristlet, whether it's a bucket bag. If you are standing in our manufacturing, manufacturing operation and you look out the back door, the back window, the first thing you see is docks and lobster boats. And that's iconic Maine. So our back wall, it's an iconic Maine lobster shack. That was the idea or vision that came about from that. There's repurposed cedar shingles that were used that came off an old barn. We try to introduce that into every store that we have. So each store you go in, you're likely to see a boat dock. You're likely to see old barn board that's been reclaimed that's over 100 years old. It's a sustainable brand where we take and we've repurposed sales, turned them into beautiful totes and accessories. Same thing, we're repurposing barn board in our stores that really bring it home as a main brand. Aaron, I know you saw the space before, so now let's go down and take a look at the after and the big reveal and see what the team has done. All right, Aaron, welcome to our flagship store on Commercial Street. Oh my gosh. Let's go shop. All right. <laughs> oh, and it's all color coordinated. Of course, I see. yeah, the team worked on that yesterday. And so all of the buoys and the ropes, assuming those are all. Everything salvaged. Yeah, yeah, everything salvaged. Some of the rope comes with the sails. When we cut the sails and take it apart, we take it out. So that's all material that we have. This is a first. We don't have this in any other store. So now this is our anchor wall. And what started as the Navy anchor, which was one of our first designs, you probably have it bag. right. And still our best seller wow. has really evolved yeah. because customers have asked for it. So this is the one and only all anchor wall that we it have. It is, yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, so this is our Shabig line. And it oh. really evolved from one duffel that we had, again, another one-of-a-kind element. We don't have any other old sailing uh, uh, boats in any of our stores use it as displays, but we had the awesome. space in here. We found this beautiful boat and brought it up here, so uh, we think it makes a, a great display. Well, congratulations, Don and team. Well, thank you so much. I mean, as you can see, it's, it, it really is the result of lots of effort from a lot of different people contributing. And what's most gratifying for me is just the collaboration and the way that this came together. And it certainly wouldn't be possible without, you know, a lot of experience and a lot of a lot of hard work by uh, so many people. You make Maine proud. Thank you. Can't wait to come back. Great. <laughs> we can't wait to have you. So, Aaron, I know. You already have a number of totes in your collection, and you said it must be really hard to choose, so I'm gonna challenge you to pick out one more tote today for your collection. <laughs> okay, just my okay. arm done. Yes. All right, I've got my lobster claw. I have that. So you know what I'm gonna do? No. No, I don't. <laughs> this one has pockets 
for diapers. <laughs> and this one, I'm gonna buy for my mother. You for Mother's well. Day, yes. Fabulous. So, thank you. <laughs>Cooking for Community uh, is a crisis response, grassroots driven organization that was formed in the very early days of the COVID pandemic to raise funds, to support restaurants, to cook meals for hungry people. Cooking for Community started with an idea, an idea that there were restaurants in need, there were uh, friends and community members who had to, to close down, who were losing their jobs, and there were increasing numbers of hungry people, of scared people, of people that couldn't access um, nourishment. I think a lot of people uh, were wondering where their next meal was gonna come from. So we had an idea, um, and it was a collective idea, to tap our community, to raise money, to support restaurants, to cook for the people that needed the food. We, over the past year, have served over 100,000 meals in Maine. We have involved thousands of community members as donors, as partners, as colleagues, as volunteers. It's, it's really been an incredible group effort that has coalesced around this core concept. When Hannaford called and joined in a conversation with Cafe Miranda to to bring our model and our idea that we had been piloting and implementing in the greater Portland area to the mid-coast, we were beyond thrilled to be able to see this um, effort expand and to serve more regions and more people. Over the years, I've worked a lot with underserved populations, mostly in the Portland area. So we chose agencies such as Amistad in Portland, uh, Hospitality House, and the landing place up in the Rockland area, where we knew there were unsheltered people, um, people who were suddenly experiencing food insecurity and needed to access food pantries that they hadn't done before, and tried to sort of direct the meals where they were most needed. 98% of the money that we raise goes directly to pay for meals. None of us are paid. We're all volunteers, we're a total volunteer organisation. Uh, Rockland was a little different because we had this um, wonderful arrangement with Hannaford and we knew that we could make 200 meals a week with the funding that they provided and, and we supplemented. We supply hospitality house, landing place, AOI food pantry and some of our meals get distributed more widely to outlying areas and food pantries in the Rockland area. The response from people, I think partly because Maine is such a foodie state, um, has been quite remarkable. 
you know, private donations, partners like Hannaford. We've been able to secure some grants. It's taken a huge um, village, if you like, to, to raise this money. Um, but, you know, I, I'm impressed. It's serious, serious change, $1.2 million. We like the idea of dignity, you know, that we're giving really good food that we would like to eat. Nutritious, well-balanced, attractive restaurant quality. in your ride and take a ride on the easier side embrace the roads enjoy the streets and share a smile with everyone you meet pick up your neighbors and give them some love show the whole world we can rise above put on a smile hop in your ride and take a ride on the easier side Hi, I'm Mike Vale, President of Hannaford Supermarkets. The customers really appreciate all the work that our, that our associates do to present the stores well and to provide great service and uh, provide a great atmosphere. Uh, it's a very complex business and we do it well because of the associates that we have and the talent that we recruit and hire and train. For us and for those of us that are in this business and, and make it a career, we're very, very passionate about it and very proud of the brand that we represent for our customers and our communities. At Kennebec Savings Bank, we're not just a bank, we're a community bank in the truest sense of the word. We dedicate 10% of our income to go back to the communities that we serve. Last year, that amount totaled over $1.1 million to 350 different organizations in 35 communities right here in Maine, all while our employees volunteered over 8,000 hours of community service. We are proud of our role in the community and hope you'll give us a try. Call or click Kennebec Savings Bank today. I'm Steve Levesque. I'm the president of the Moosehead Lake Region Economic Development Corporation. Uh, we're here to kind of serve as a catalyst to help support uh, economic revitalization and vitality of the region. CMP investment, it's significant because obviously it's going to provide much needed element for lighting uh, of the public space here. We're committed to uh, helping revitalize the communities in, in our region and we are delighted to have uh, great partners like Central Maine Power. I like to eat whole foods whenever possible. I like to eat whole grains, I like to eat whole fruits, whole vegetables. Most of the vitamins, minerals, and nutritive content in foods is actually in the food itself. It's not just in the juice or in the uh, starch of what you're eating. So whenever you're eating grains, try to eat whole grains. Uh, whenever you're eating fruit, either eat it whole or make it into a smoothie rather than juicing it. Whole vegetables, they'll keep longer, they'll keep you full for longer, and they're far more nutritious. Hey yo, hey yo! Oh, look what I have for you guys! Right there, on request for the families and the crew. But I'm making myself a sandwich out of this, so I get a chunk, okay? Let me finish it off. So good. It's steaming. Look at that! Yes. Right here at Cafe Miranda. Let's go outside and have a little fun. All right. So here we are at Cafe Miranda, beautiful cosmopolitan downtown Rockland, and hey, we're sitting in the in a parking space. What happened? <laughs> what happened? This is what happened. It was a pandemic, or is a pandemic. You know, it's great to see you all, and it's been months, but I know that yeah, this hasn't the changed. whole yeah. time this is not you've been changed. wanting this. Notice the char on the bottom there. We got the char from the oven. So it's been a challenge. Uh, the city's been great. The public has been great. We've been open all winter. Mm -hmm. We were out here with our four fire pits made by our friend Tim Steele. We auctioned one off to support uh, uh, cooking for community. We got to revamp our business model. We picked this place up, we created jobs, and part of that is the cooking for community bit. So tell, yeah, tell us about your involvement with that and how you found out about it. And Well, this is something that I've been actually trying to put together for a couple of years. The 200 meals a week we make now, we started off with 100, now we're doing 200, and we make a Miranda quality meal for AIO, for New Hope for Women, for a bunch of other organizations. And none of this would have been ha possible without Hannaford's help. Hannaford's sells food, right? They're paying me to buy food from somebody else so I can serve it to somebody who may have bought their food. Think about that. But I think that's a grand gesture. 
And that really shows the soul of what a main company is about. And Hannaford provided the money for the pilot project, and now we're getting other funding. Like when you order online here, you get an option to donate to Cooking for Community. People walk up and hand us a check for $1,000. Wow. There's a lot of anonymous donations. So we're going to wind up making somewhere between seven and 8,000 or more meals in less than a year that went out to this community here. For the whole history here that we've been involved in the community, we've given back, that's Miranda's spirit. So Cafe Miranda um, provides us with 40 meals every week that the Landing Place delivers to uh, families that we serve in the area. So we pick up on Monday and deliver the meals for the next day or two. You know, during COVID, families that we serve have really been suffering. So they have told us that this has made such a huge difference that we're able to deliver heat and serve meals and we have groceries that we also supply them with, hygiene products, art supplies. So it's made a huge difference. So we really appreciate Cafe Miranda um, partnering with us so that we can provide people with food, which is so essential. You can discover which fresh and flavorful Real Maine products are in season. Visit realmaine.com to explore the diverse Maine agricultural products that you can enjoy today. Berlin City Auto Group with Jaeger and uh, we are talking about the one wheel. Last year, if you remember and saw the Bar Harbor episode, he brought it up there with his kiddos. Well, it's actually the learning curve can be from five minutes to 30 minutes. Okay. I'm guessing for you, it will be around five minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you All for right. your confidence. <laughs> All right. Lean All right. forward and get the middle position. There you go. So the board is engaged. Ladies and gentlemen, first one wheel ride. And thank you, Jaeger, for helping me with my first one wheel experience. Awesome. Any parting words, my friend? The parting words are really, I gotta thank Hannaford for the CFC and all the people you know who you are that did this. My crew, my customers, my family. We're all working the long hours, putting the effort in, stylizing the food, and putting the heart into it, because that's what you get. Like in this bag. What's yeah. in here? Flour, water. I don't think there's anything left in mine. I ate all mine. Yeast, salt. <laughs> the undefinable thing is that we care about what we're doing, and every day we try to get better. That's the whole thing. It's like, okay, what do we do today to improve our skill? Not for perfection, but to be in a relentless pursuit of being excellent. That's what we do. Well, cheers to better times. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna kill it it's this year. Nice to see you. Hanging out with you again. <laughs> when I moved to Maine, I went, oh, people trust each other and they trust you to do the right thing. We're giving back to this place as it's given to us, yeah. and we're giving it back again. Cool. We're setting an example. And thank you so much for watching this episode of Maine Life. To follow our adventures, you can check out our website, mainlifemedia.com, Facebook, Maine Life Media, or my Instagram, at Erno Valley. Thank you to New Center Maine and to all of our sponsors. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope to see you next week. Happy adventuring. But the shovel, it digs deep, and the calluses grow over. Like a mirror to a mirror. So on this episode, we are going to talk about how some of our partners teamed up with local producers. <laughs> I had it right! That's the uh, one time I'm going to get that right! Uh, it was just about a year ago where we were... <laughs> Sorry! And if I screw up the next time, I don't want to hear anything from her. <laughs> Let's do one where we come running straight at the camera. <laughs> so thanks for watching. You go ahead. <laughs> it's been a while since we filmed I, down there. I, yeah. <laughs>